Do you ever have problems trying to figure out which grill fits your truck? Well, I'm here to talk to you guys about the 1967 to 72 GM front grills. Over this six year period, GM made 10 different grills for these trucks. Stick around and I'll show you how to identify each of them in which year and make they fit. Being a big 67 to 72 Chevy truck fan, I thought I knew all the differences between these grills. But boy, was I wrong. Why? Why would GM make 10 different grills over six years? Either they couldn't figure out what looked cool, or they were just trying to sell more parts. Chevy alone substantially changed their grills every two years, but they did make minor changes every year. GMC must have liked their original style in 67 because they only made minor changes over the six year period. My goal of this video is to help you guys identify which grill fits your year and make a truck. If you're buying these off of Marketplace, Craigslist, or even swap meets, you do want to ensure that you're buying the right parts for your year and make, especially if you're going year specific. You've seen from my previous videos that I've helped identify the front fenders, the hoods, the hood latches, and again, the grills, there's more changes over the six year period with the grills than on any other parts of the truck. Stick around and I'll show you their differences and how to identify each of them by year and make. So let's start IDing these hoods. Number one and two were the 67 and 68 Chevrolet front grills. These would either be painted white or they would be painted to match the color of the truck. These were both steel bumpers. They would have had these large rectangular openings a red bow tie in the center of the grill, and the park lamps and turn signals would be actually mounted in to the grill as well. Now, if we stepped up to a more fancy version like the custom model or the fancy model, then you would see more trim accents. So you can see Chevrolet has put uh, trim around these grill openings. You would also have seen chrome around the sides of the headlight, and on the front part of the hoods, there would have been a piece of chrome to really dress the top edge up as well. You had seen in my previous videos about how to identify the 67 to 72 hood latches for these trucks. Well, now we can actually put them with the grill so you can see how they really work. This would just mount to the top of the grill and then you would be able to just reach your hand in dead center to pop the hood. So definitely something that gets overlooked as well is the center grill support. You do have to ensure you have the right one for your grill. Every two years, as the grills change with Chevrolet's, so do the center grill supports. These are pretty easy to install. It just tucks under into the grill, bolt it in, you're done. So our next grill would be the 19... Hello. The third and fourth grill that Chevrolet offered was the 69 and 70 grill. This was an anodized aluminum bar grill. In the center of the bar, it was embossed with the letters Chevrolet. It had clear lenses for the park and turn signals. It had black painted borders around the headlights and it had a black honeycomb grill in the top and bottom. Now, the only difference between the 69 and 70 was in 1970, the honeycombs had black vertical painted lines on the honeycombs on the top and the bottom. Again, a very subtle change, but it was a change. There is a difference between the 69 and 70. Now it's head release, we talked about in another video as well, mounts over the top and it has that opening right here in between the top of the honeycomb and the bottom of the aluminum grill. You pop it dead center. So then when we move to the center grill support, again it's different than the 69 and 70. Same thing, it would slide underneath the top of the bottom of the grill and bolt on as well. So the fifth and sixth grill would be the 1971-72 Chevrolet. This by far is my favorite looking grill. I think it looks the best, but I am pretty partial to the 1971 C10 myself. But again, it was an anodized aluminum outer grill and it had the large plastic egg crate inner. Now from 69 and 70, they moved the blue bow tie from the hood back into the center of the grill and the turn signals and park lights were moved down to the front bumper. The significant difference from 1971, it would have had a black painted strap going around the headlights and bordering the front of the grill. In 1972, that black stripe wouldn't have been on here. Another option people would choose is to remove the plastic egg crate grill, and then they would insert this billet aluminum. 
Now it's pretty expensive, but a lot of people don't like having that plastic inner. Now, I'm pretty partial to it because I think it looks pretty cool. But again, this is an option people have. But this billet was not something that Chevrolet offered as an option. So when we talk about the hood release for the 7172, in the previous videos we talked about how this handle had to be offset. It was important that it had to be offset because when we mount it to the inner grille, if it was center, we couldn't get our hand through the center of the egg crate. So we'd have to go through the top row and actually slide into the top right to release it. And just as the previous grills, you do have to ensure that you have the center support that matches the 1971-72. So now you've seen all six options that Chevrolet had from 1967 to 72. Go through in the old clickety-clack and type down what your favorite grill is out of this era. There's no surprise, mine's the 1971-72. I just think that aluminum outer with the large egg crate in it and that bright blue bow tie just looked awesome. The only downfall is if you ever hit a bird. You know, these things just explode when you hit anything versus having some of the more solid aluminum. But again, I just like the looks. So now let's move on to the GMC grills. One of the most significant differences between Chevrolet and GMC was that the GMCs had four headlights on all six years of their pickup trucks, where Chevrolet only had two. And that brings us to our seventh grill, the 1967 GMC. This was an all chrome front grille that had the letters GMC in the center. Also, on the front leading edge of the hood in 67 and 68, there would have been a chrome piece to fill in the top gap. Grill number eight would have been the 1968. The big change there was the letters GMC were removed from the center of grille and they were put on the leading front edge of the hood. Grill number nine would have been the 1969 and 70 GMC grill. Again, it was all chrome, but GMC now added what they called a wide eyebrow, this piece that surrounds the outside edges of the headlights. And it also had a chrome filler piece that used to be on the hoods, which is now attached to the grill itself to fill the gap. And that brings us to number 10, the 1971-72 GMC grill. Again, this stayed all chrome, had the wide eyebrow surrounding the headlights, but they decided to go through and paint black accents all the way around the outside border and up the center of the grill. And now that brings us to the hood release. In my previous video, I kind of called this one the oddball because it looks so significantly different than the others. GMCs had to have this very big offset to get through the center portion of the grill. And as you see with our GMCs as well, they went through and had a very different center support. It's more of a straight piece than what we saw on several of the other center supports on the Chevrolets. So now you've seen all 10 grills that GMC and Chevrolet had to offer from 1967 to 72. If you guys find this video valuable, hit the like button, ring the bell, and check out some of the other videos that I have on identifying other parts of the 67 to 72. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Almost forgot. Is anybody interested in buying a 1967 to 72 uh, front grill? I'll probably hold on to the 71. Just saying I have a couple. <laughs>